Hey, I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue, and today we're doing a head-to-head -head battle. I'm putting the brand new Camp Chef Woodwind Pro head-to-head -head against the Masterbuilt Gravity Series, but we have a plot twist as I'm going to use a only wood fire versus the new smoke box in the Camp Chef to see what can turn out the closest thing to offset ribs. So I've just recently done a head-to-head -head against my uh, Oklahoma Joe's Highland Offset Smoker and the Camp Chef Woodwind, and it went a little bit as you would have expected without knowing anything, which is the Camp Chef was much easier to use and ran our fire nice and clean, but it didn't pack the punch in smoke flavor. There's an old saying in muscle cars, there's a no re replacement for displacement. This is almost equally true when it comes to wood fires. If we are using small supplements Supplemental wood chunks for flavor versus burning a wood fire for heat as well as our flavor, these two just never end up being equal. But this creates an interesting fork in the road. Do you have to then get larger splits like 12 inch, break them down to six inch, and then tend to your fire every 20, 30 minutes in my Oklahoma Joes? Or do you want to take the easy route, hand the keys over to the artificial intelligence and add uh, a smoking chip or a chunk into your smoke drawer every 45 minutes and get a pretty good result for way less effort? But I think there's actually an option in the middle of these two. While I know this is not going to be the same as offset quality, it's darn close for way less effort. So today we are gonna do the Masterbuilt Gravity Series running a wood only fire. So wood for heat, wood for fuel, and the computer taking care of everything versus the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro using its innovative, already putting it to the top of the pellet grill category, smoke box with smoking wood chunks in order to see which turns out the best backyard ribs if you want nothing to do with running the fire yourself. Let's find out. So as you can tell, I already have smoke rolling in both of our pits. Setup with these is incredibly simple. So starting with the master bill, I like to add just a little bit of charcoal, about an inch. So when I add my fire starter and start to get the temperature up, I have a bit of a coal bed. And then immediately from there, we are going to switch to wood split. So I just pull out the two vent doors, set it to 270 degrees and hit fire it up. So we are coming up to temperature in our master bill. Camp Chef, uh, very similarly, pull out our smoke box, add a couple wood chunks, open our draft door. That's gonna allow the fire to come up and hit these. This is exactly what that's doing. Uh, when it's open, fire's coming up and directly burning our wood. When we close it, this is going to smolder and prolong a little bit of time that we get uh, life out of each smoking wood piece. Add some more pellets and again, uh, using the digital control, set it to 270 degrees and let it come up to temperature. Let me show you on the master belt since we are preheated, what it looks like inside the hopper when we're gonna go and add another split in order to maintain 270 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, the control panel, as you can see, is reading 271 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's exactly where we want it. Let's take a peek down in here. So you can see we've got one wood split on top of that charcoal bed, just burning along. We've definitely got a little bit more life in there, but while I'm gonna get to work on prepping our ribs, let's take our extra wood splits, just drop them down in there. That'll be plenty for the next 40 minutes or so. Let's go prep our ribs and we'll be ready to start cooking. Okay, we're gonna keep things pretty simple for today's experiment since this is really about being able to tell the smoke from one smoker to another. We're not gonna go crazy with a bunch of binders and rubs, but speaking of rubs, I am going to use, I've ordered a bunch of these. I'm gonna be doing how to recreate some of the popular uh, Texas rubs, uh, but I, in order to do that, you need to get a bunch of cooks, experience it, compare it to your own. So I've been doing a bunch of this in the background, but I bought about six of each. And so before they start to clump up, I'm gonna use them. And I already know from a couple other videos, uh, the Franklin's salt and pepper, along with the barbecue spice rub, combined these two end up tasting near identical to what I make. So this has a Lowry's taste uh, with no salt. This is our salt and pepper. So this is basically uh, what I would make if I was doing my own salt, pepper, garlic with the Lowry's flavor profile. I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow mustard uh, as a binder. So I'll take you uh, fast forward while I start to get these out of the package. We're gonna pat them nice and dry, use the yellow mustard as our binder. And then uh, I'm not going to remove the membrane. I've done a bunch of experiments uh, side by side and I don't find that you appreciate it, that difference. And speaking of Franklin's, 
Uh, there was even a video I saw where they mentioned that they don't uh, remove the membrane in the restaurant either. So I'm not going to uh, fuss with that today. And while I showed adding a little bit more smoke wood inside of our master belt, I also have done the same with our camp chef just so that uh, we don't lose our coal bed by the time we have these seasoned up and are ready to get them on. Take it fast forward. Despite it being called a rub, you actually don't want to rub it in. You want to just pat that, press that down so it doesn't come off. Flip it over and we're going to finish doing the exact same thing on our presentation side. Take it back to fast forward, repeat the process, a little bit of mustard, a little bit more rub, and we'll be ready to get these on the pits. On to our Camp Chef Woodwind, right in the middle, on the second rack. Again, I still have this firebox open. So if I pull this out to take a look, you can see that's causing that wood to burn in open flames. So we've got enough in there to go for a bit. Close that back up, leave it open. Let's go get our master belt ribs on. Also get the best result on the second level in the master belt. So I'm just gonna drop these on here as well. Looks good, let's keep cooking. All right, it's two minutes after noon on Saturday. So that's gonna be really easy now to keep track since we just added our ribs. And right before we seasoned them, which was only a few minutes before, we added wood. So we'll be able to keep track of that 45 minutes or so. So that'll be about 1240 from when we put our wood on. We'll check inside of our camp chef in the smoke drawer, as well as how we're doing with wood inside of our master belt. On that, we're gonna keep things pretty simple. We'll add some spray. I'll update you if anything uh, crazy or unexpected shows up along Along the way. Otherwise, our next big uh, hangout moment will be when we get these off and get ready to dive in for our taste test. Find out which of these two gets closer to an offset smoker without me having to do any of the fire management. See you in a little bit. Okay, we are now 45 minutes in, so I'm not seeing any more smoke coming out of our camp chef, so I'm wondering if we need to add a little bit more wood. We still have some smoke going, but it's getting a little bit darker, so I wonder if our fire is starting to die out. So the only way to answer these questions is take a look, and I've got a spray bottle mixed half water, half apple cider vinegar. We're gonna spray both racks of ribs. Let's go take a look, start with our camp chef. Okay, let's open it up. So I still see actually some charcoal there, some glowing embers, that looks good, but we definitely are getting the spot of needing more. Drop whatever I can fit in here. Okay, we're loaded back up, let's get this back in. Open that back up, let's get some spray. I always like to spray right when we're adding wood. Uh, smoke needs moisture to adhere to, so this is gonna help maximize how much smoke we can get to adhere to our ribs. Go check our master belt. Okay, let's take a look down inside. So we still, we're not out of wood. We still have some wood going, but I'm gonna drop in another split or two just to make sure that that keeps going for the next 45 minutes. The reason I'm not filling the hopper up was with wood is I saw uh, a video earlier, Tom Horseman did this, filled it up with wood. If we overfill the wood, it ends up turning into charcoal. So that's why I'm only doing one or two splits at a time and needing to do this every 45 minutes. Even though judging by the look of that, I think we could have stretched to an hour. Let's get some spray on our master belt ribs as well. And I'm gonna repeat this a bunch more times. I'll see you a little bit later on when it's time for our taste test. All right, well, welcome to the future, or at least 4.30. So the ribs were on, we put them on just around noon. They both finished within about 15 minutes of each other. So I just checked for probe feel as well as temperature as we started to get close. So we were done about 3.30 in the afternoon and both grills, this is one of the features I fall in love with that they both have, is that we can quickly dial the temperatures down to 150 degrees Fahrenheit and use them as a hot holding oven. So we have a heated rest. We can leave this for one hour to many, many hours and not worry about dipping into uh, you know, any sort of food safety concerns. So they both have been resting inside their respective grills for about an hour. So it's time to get them off and see how we did. Let's take a look. Okay, let's start with our Camp Chef ribs. These certainly look good. Don't wanna let those break, but they're not gonna break. We haven't overcooked them. Uh, I like a nice bite through rib versus fall off the bone, so I can already tell that's not gonna be a problem. Let's get these off. Okay, let's remove our master built ribs. Can already see side by side here a bit of a difference in our bark color very similar in terms of texture. Let's get these off, go slice them up. So very similar to when I did my comparison against the offset. 
Very noticeable difference in terms of the bark color. The Camp Chef, once again, to my eye, this is the more attractive bark. We get a bit of a mahogany color versus starting to look like a Texas style brisket. Um, but we will see how it tastes. So this is our Camp Chef rib. This is our master built gravity series using only wood for fuel. So let's get a couple bones out of each, see how we did. So that looks awfully familiar compared to last time, which I guess makes sense because we had similar settings. We were set to number 10 on smoke. We're adding wood, uh, including leaving the damper open. And once again, I don't want to squeeze all that juice out, but if you just see the slightest little touch and this is gushing with juice and a pretty decent uh, smoke ring. Let's check out our master built using only wood. Okay, so side by side, not as pronounced of a smoke ring as what I got on my offset, but I still think there's a slight smoke ring advantage. So this is Camp Chef, this is the master built with wood. Little bit more of a smoke ring. And again, as you can see here, just juices galore on all of these pieces. They look really good. And again, I don't want to squeeze that all out. Let's dive in for our taste test. So the best part for me at least. So let's start with the woodwind rib since that's uh, familiar to me from last time. So I don't know where we're at and make sure that we didn't do any worse and I can maybe appreciate some of the difference in seasoning. Mm. On a rib, I do like this Texas style seasoning more than what I used in my last video. And again, we are bite through tenderness and same <laughs> in terms of smoke. Let's get another bite. So no surprises here, since we did the same thing as last time, we got the same thing as last time, which is really nice, clean smoke, incredibly subtle. And most of that is living on the surface layer. Like we used our uh, water spray with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Uh, as soon as you get down into the rib, there's not a ton of depth of smoke. But this is really pleasant. And again, uh, up there, and, you know, if you were to go to any average restaurant, not the Texas top 50 for sure, but any normal restaurant, this is going to be ahead of 95% of any sort of smoked rib that you can get. It's really good. Let's see how the master built did running only wood. Head to, head to head. Let me know in the comments what you think. Cheers. So for a second there, I actually thought we were maybe almost dead equal. It wasn't until you, you start to chew, but I'm getting a little bit of that offset experience where the smoke penetrates all the way through. Let me get another bite, just uh, not jump to any conclusions here. So this is really good, but the difference here versus my offset, it's not as obvious. When I had my offset, it was almost like, why are we doing this comparison? There's a really, really big difference. There is a small and ever so slightly appreciable difference in terms of the smoke quality. Uh, the smoke quality. So just like I've said before, running my master belt on wood, it's good, clean smoke. It's approaching offset quality and not only approaching offset quality, somebody who knows what they're doing on, uh, on an offset. And again, offset's a big category. I'm talking about something like my Oklahoma Joe's Highland here, not going to some <laughs> big daddy uh, offset smoker costing three or four times more than any of the smokers that we've used here today. So for the look, I'm, I like the look of the bark on the Camp Chef Woodwind. That mahogany color on pork in particular is really attractive. In terms of smoke ring, we've got a slight advantage just visually eat with your eyes. It's not as pronounced as it was on the offset, but I think the master belt is just ahead here. In terms of taste and texture, well, texture is identical, uh, but in terms of taste, splitting hairs, but if I had to choose the two and only again, you're forcing me to pick one, I'm gonna pick the master belt here. So, so, so slight. Um, so what else can we uh, make from this? The difference is incredibly close. I think I've got rid of my wood bag here. Uh, fuel cost I think would be a, an important consideration. I used yet almost in another entire bag of those pre-cut wood splits in my master belt, adding uh, logs about two or three little splits every 45 minutes to uh, the same ratio as what I was adding in the master belt. But here, the difference in terms of burning all wood is not 
as obvious as it was in the offset. So how would we pick one? I don't know, I'll, I'll leave that up to you to decide, but I'll share for me what I'm thinking. Uh, so again, coming back to where we opened with on versatility, I do like the fact that the master built can achieve in an internal temperature inside the grill of 700 degrees, whereas I was only able to achieve 300 degrees uh, inside the Camp Chef wood, uh, Camp Chef, inside the Camp Chef Woodwind Pro. So I think there's a little bit more usable, uh, you know, range of temperature. I also like that the master built comes with the option for things like a rotisserie and a griddle, and there may be some of those already out and or coming out very shortly for the Camp Chef. So I'm not sure that the accessory ecosystem sets it apart. In terms of build quality, I haven't had either of these pits long enough to make a conclusion. Neither of them, in my opinion, in terms of, you know, if I look at my Komodo Joe, I've got a lifetime warranty on my ceramic. If I look at my full size offset, I'm pretty confident that I can hand this down to my kids and they can hand it down to their kids' kids. I, I'm not saying it's factual. I don't believe that I will be handing either of these down to my kids or my kids' kids when we're dealing with electronics, fans, controllers, and I'm going purely based off of what I read online here, no personal uh, experience. I've had no problems, no issues with either grill, but they are not feeling the exact same in terms of build quality. And if I had to pick one on build quality, I'd probably go, you know, Team Camp Chef. There's a couple nice little finishes like the gasket material that surrounds our door that also surrounds the firebox, the metal vents on the back. There's just a couple little fit and finish things here that feel a little bit more premium. But again, I've had no issue with either one and there's nothing blatantly obvious to me looking at either one in terms of thinking that one will last much, much longer versus the other one. It'd be one of those things we'll find out in a couple of years. So versatility, uh, I think slight advantage to master belt. Build quality, they each have their own uh, slight advantages, even though I the fit and finish, I think I lean a little bit more towards the uh, Camp Chef. And then the quality of the smoke, I think falls back in the master built category. So if you find yourself looking at either of these two smokers, I would just say, what matters to you? Does versatility matter? Does the absolute best or getting this close as you can to an offset smoke quality without having to tend to a fire, then I think your team master built. If you want uh, from a fuel cost perspective to look at getting a really good result, I think actually pellets with a couple wood chunks would be less expensive than running the pure wood fire that I did today, at least with the store-bought wood splits. If you had a local source and were able to find some wood on your own, perhaps you could bring that cost down. But I think the operational cost of the Camp Chef Woodwind might be a little bit more uh, affordable for the average smoke session than what I used today. Really interesting test, very close uh, in terms of results, but I'm gonna give this to the master belt today for being just a smidge closer to what I can do on an offset. Although either of these, if the website say offset quality, I would dial that back a bit and say, we're not getting offset quality, but you do gain your afternoon. I was able to do a whole bunch of other things on my Saturday uh, and only show up every 45 minutes or so to spray, add some wood, and that was purely choice. If we wanted, we could make both of these run entirely on their own with zero interaction for the entire cook. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to uh, smash that thumbs up button. If you'd like to hang out and ask questions about these smokers or any others, I do a monthly live for members only. So check out the member section if you wanna get more details on how we can ask questions or interact in a more real-time format than these pre-recorded videos allow. But that's it for today. I'm gonna to take these inside. I'm James from Smoking Dead Barbecue signing off. And remember, don't be afraid to fire it up. It's the best one. Mm.